Imagine a business that made a product that killed up to one half of their best customers. It wouldn't kill its users suddenly, but slowly and insidiously through poisons that cause or exacerbate cancer, heart disease, strokes, and lung disease. Imagine that the companies knew their product was deadly and addictive, but kept manufacturing it anyway. Imagine that the company spent billions of dollars every year to replace their dying customers through advertising campaigns that hook new users, especially young ones, by making the product look fun, sexy, and inviting. Meet the cigarette. Hi, I'm Christy Turlington. If you're a woman who smokes and you want to quit, you're not alone. The fact is that most women who smoke want to quit but they can't find the time, or they've tried before and they think they can't do it. Or maybe they're afraid they'll gain weight. If you or someone you love smokes, listen up. You can quit, and when you do, you'll know how good it feels to take control of your health. It might be hard, but it's worth it. If you smoke, quitting for good is the single most important thing you can do for a healthy life. I know because I'm one of the women who has kicked the habit. It's one of the best things I ever did. In view of the continuing and mounting evidence from many sources, it is the judgment of the committee that cigarette smoking contributes substantially to mortality from certain specific diseases and to the overall death rate. By 2025, 27 years from now, 500 million people worldwide will die of tobacco-related disease. That's a Vietnam War every day for 27 years. That's a Titanic every 43 minutes for 27 years. How did it happen that this deadly product claiming the lives of 430,000 Americans each year became so popular? You've come a long way, baby. Introducing new Virginia Slims, the Slim cigarette for women only, tailored for the We may have come a long way in some ways, but when it comes to tobacco, women have taken many steps back. Today, there are many more deaths in this country each year from lung cancer than breast cancer. Women with breast cancer have, oh, 85, 90 percent five-year survival rates. For women with lung cancer, it's only about 16 percent who live five years beyond the time of diagnosis. The number one cause of cancer deaths in women is lung cancer. The rate of lung cancer in women has increased by 600 percent in the last 50 years. Beginning in the 1920s and continuing today, tobacco companies have targeted women with aggressive advertising campaigns designed to win them over. The cigarette has been sold as a means for weight control and a symbol of freedom and independence. Later themes such as it's a woman's thing or more recently find your voice have continued um, to suggest that um, the cigarette is somehow a badge of, of women's freedom. I think the irony is that it's just the opposite. Cigarettes have been portrayed by Hollywood and the media as a glamorous accessory that will make women seductive and alluring. But the promised freedom and attractiveness turned out to be anything but. The real ploy behind the marketing was to get women hooked on one of the most deadly and addictive substances we know. That's true. It won't happen to me. <laughs> Lung cancer is a possibility. You know, I do think about that. I have watched things on emphysema, and you know, it's very scary. I guess it's just not the way I visualize myself dying. Maybe that sounds weird, but I've always just figured I'll, you know, live till I'm old and get hit by a truck when I'm 70. My father died of lung cancer. He was 64. It was a senseless death because it could have been prevented. Not everyone who smokes will die from it, but as many as half of all long-term smokers will. Everyone thinks she won't be the one, but why take chances? I really don't think smoking is bad. Um, it, that pretty much depends on how often you do it. Lung cancer, emphysema, heart disease, anybody that thinks that they're going to be able to smoke and won't develop some of these um, uh, complications or diseases is delusional. I feel as though that I'm young and there's no way possible I can get lung cancer. I'm only 24. 
Meet Pam Laffin, who started smoking when she was just a kid. I started smoking because I wanted to look older, and I got hooked. Cigarettes gave me asthma and bronchitis, but I couldn't quit. I didn't quit until I got emphysema and had a lung removed. I was 24. I'm 26 now. The medication, which I'll take for the rest of my life, left me with this fat face and a hump on my neck. I started smoking to look older, and I'm sorry to say, it worked. 